Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have some big news for the Ahsoka series and we're also going to be talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's get straight into it. So as you may have heard, the big news of the day is that Ahsoka has officially begun production. The official social media accounts of Star Wars and Lucasfilm publicly released this announcement, a surprise to be sure but a welcome one. The announcement came with a picture of the director's chair with Dave Filoni iconic hat sitting on it. He is of course the showrunner of the series and just like the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, the Ahsoka show is his brainchild and this series is really where he gets to continue the story of his character Ahsoka who we've been following for the best part of 14 years and as a Star Wars Rebels fan in particular, this is going to be truly special as the main premise as we know is Sabine and Ahsoka's search for Ezra and Thrawn. As such, the show has been appropriately described as Star Wars Rebels Season 5 but this one in live action. Now part of this announcement that I've not seen too many folks talk about is the wording of the tweet. Star Wars Ahsoka is described as a quote original series as opposed to a limited series and this is absolutely excellent news because it means we're likely going to get multiple seasons and so they can really flesh out this show however they see fit. Now when this announcement was made, the fandom erupted with joy and I kept thinking of the many ways that Dave Filoni could use this show, not only to continue the search for Ezra, but also to give us different plot threads along the way. Making Star Wars said a couple of weeks ago that they've heard the ghost crew, or should I say what's left of it, is absolutely going to appear in Ahsoka. They're certain about Hera and Sabine, but they weren't too sure about Zeb. But as long as they're able to do it in CGI or maybe even with prosthetics, I suppose there's no reason he can't feature. But something else I thought about which I did share on Twitter is the possibility of seeing Plo Koon in flashbacks. Not only is he Dave Filoni's favourite Jedi, but they've been using him as the fake Jedi to cover up Luke Skywalker's appearances in The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. And as we saw in the Disney gallery for The Mandalorian Season 2, they even made a model mask of the Jedi. So what if this time in the Ahsoka show, we actually see Plo Koon in flashbacks? He died during Order 66, so it cannot be present day, but there are so many other significant connections that you could bring into the show that connects him to Ahsoka. One notable one that I can imagine Dave pulling off in live action is a flashback to Plo Koon discovering Ahsoka as an infant. While on a mission to the planet of Shili, the homeworld of the Togruta, Jedi Master Plo Koon found a three-year-old force-sensitive girl whose name was Ahsoka Tano. Kuhn brought Tano back to the Jedi Temple so she could be trained as a Jedi, and the two of them kept in touch over the years, maintaining a close bond and friendship throughout the Clone Wars. Now during the time frame of the Ahsoka series, it's unclear what Ahsoka's perception of the Jedi Order is. She still doesn't call herself a Jedi after having left the Order many years ago, but I can see this show exploring her inner conflicts and memories, and that could go all the way back to her being discovered by Plo Koon. And in addition, since Hayden Christensen is also signed on to the series, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that flashbacks do play a big role. I personally want the Ahsoka show to give us all three depictions of Hayden. Clone Wars flashbacks, Vader flashbacks, and in the present day, as a force ghost. Maybe I'm being too hopeful, but the way I see it is if you've got Hayden on board, go all out. Ahsoka deserves the respect as a character to have a series that does justice to the 14 year journey we've been following her on in animation and then live action. And for the love of Felucia, please have Ashley Eckstein involved in some way, shape or form. But share your thoughts of the Ahsoka news in the comments down below. And do you think Plo Koon in flashbacks is something that Dave is going to gift us? So now, my dear Megalorians, we do have a bit of Kenobi news. A new TV spot aired in Times Square, and while there wasn't any new footage, the final still of the TV spot is one we've not seen before, a close-up of Desert Obi-Wan. I hope we get this TV spot in HD, and that more of them are to come, and who knows, there could be a couple of bits of new footage here and there. And speaking of Kenobi, we do have a John Williams update. So as we know, Natalie Holt is going to be the primary composer, but Williams was involved for one theme, well we now know some of the details behind it. This is from IndieWire and they say the following, The world of Star Wars returns in a big way this month with Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Disney Plus series that sees Ewan McGregor reprising his role from George Lucas's prequel trilogy. But for many, it just wouldn't be Star Wars without John Williams. The Oscar winner's iconic music still defines the massive sci-fi franchise and even as he steps back and lets younger composers work on Star Wars projects, his presence continues to be felt. At the 
moment, Williams is hard at work on Indiana Jones 5 and The Fablemans, so he was unable to score the entire show, so composing duties fell to Loki and Paddington composer Natalie Holt, and she's revealed some new details, notably that John Williams simply could not stay away from the project, and it turns out his contribution, his single theme, was very much a last minute addition. And she also described his theme as, quote, perfect. This is what she said. We didn't get to collaborate, but I did get to use his theme. He didn't have very long and it was quite last minute, whether he'd have time or not. But he really wanted to write that theme because he was the one character that he didn't get to write a theme for in the original movie. So I think he had this feeling that he wanted to complete the challenge, and due to scheduling conflicts, Williams only had a short period of time to write it. But the legendary composer delivered under that pressure. And Natalie Holt goes on to say, quote, I think he had two weeks and he came on board and wrote the Obi theme and a suit, which is the main title, and then a few variations of how the Obi-Wan theme can work. That was what he had time to give the project and it was just a gift. It's so perfect and in a way, once I had that Obi theme, it set the tent poles up for the project. And as I've said in the past, with John Williams involved, the Kenobi series is in good company. And so finally, my dear friends, we have a new excerpt for Shadow of the Sith. It's a novel that centers around Lando and Luke Skywalker in the lead up to the sequel trilogy. We know that Ocho of Bestoon is going to be a primary villain in the book, but they've now revealed a new menace. Set nearly 20 years after Return of the Jedi, Shadow of the Sith sees Jedi Master Luke Skywalker team up with Lando Calrissian as the pair investigate some dire rumors. Not only has Lando heard rumblings of a return Sith menace lying in wait on Exodus, but his young daughter's been kidnapped and the only lead he's got is in the path of Ochi of Bestoon, a Sith assassin on his own mission to hunt down a child that will change the galaxy forever. Suffice to say, there's a lot of dark side things going on in this book, but while Luke and Lando find themselves on the trail of the Sith assassin, Ochi is not the only Sith agent the pair is going to deal with. There is another secret adversary, and we do have a new poster for her, but her identity has not been revealed, it's a secret. So I'm going to ask you guys, who do you think this lightsaber wielding strange mysterious figure is? io9 leave us with a big tease that if you're familiar with star wars novels this figure will be familiar to you all we know is that this sith is female and she's not going to be easy to deal with i must say we're in a very exciting time for star wars novels and this one is super anticipated because while it is leaning towards the sequel trilogy it could also connect to parts of the mandoverse but with that said, let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in reading this book. It releases on June the 28th of this year. But otherwise, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.